before we embark on trying to make diagnosis on muscle biopsy, it's very important to understand that myopathic features are different from neurogenic features. And this is what I'm going to repeatedly harp in the next few slides. So I would like you to pay attention to this. Essentially, myopathic features mean primary muscle diseases, whereas neurogenic, as I alluded to earlier, arise when the nerve supplying the muscle has been cut off. So it's important, therefore, to understand and remember these features. Myopathic features are usually characterized by a large variation in fiber sizes. You have round fibers, large fibers, small fibers, you could have split fibers, but these fibers are randomly distributed throughout the fascicle. Whereas in neurogenic atrophy or neurogenic features usually have angulated atrophic fibers. And these angulated fibers are arranged in groups, unlike the randomly distributed fibers seen in myopathic diseases. So you have groups and clusters of these atrophic fibers. There could be what is known as small and large group atrophy or even group hypertrophy. And in the enzyme stains, one sees what is known as fiber tight grouping, which I will explain in the next few slides. Apart from this, in myopathies, you also have myonecrosis. So with degeneration comes around necrosis, which is known as myonecrosis. And to remove the necrotic tissue come in the phagocytes, which are the scavenger cells. So you have sometimes pale necrotic fibers completely invaded by these phagocytes, which is known as myophagocytosis. Also, myopathic features include central nuclei. So in normal fibers, up to 2% of fibers can normally have central nuclei, but should they exceed 3%, 2 to 3%, that would be considered a myopathic, favoring a myopathic uh, etiology. To contrast, in neurogenic atrophy, you typically have nuclear clumping and pycnotic nuclei. Endomycial fibrosis and adipose tissue is an indication of chronicity of the disease and commonly seen early, or in, early in the course of myopathic diseases. It may also occur in end-stage neurogenic atrophy. So with these uh, features in mind, I'll just show you a few pictures just to reinforce what I have just said. This is an extremely low power view to show fatty infiltration and complete loss of fascicular architecture. The fascicles are disrupted by fat infiltration and also the fibers are separated by fibrous, fibrous tissue. At a higher magnification, there's marked variation in fiber sizes, as you can see lot of fibrosis and fatty infiltration. And then there are these pale necrotic fibers. So this is a focus of myonecrosis with phagocytes ingesting it. So this is by myophagocytosis, which follows myonecrosis. In this picture here, you can see many fibers with central nuclei. So innumerable fibers with central nuclei, variation in fiber sizes, splitting of fibers, all of which are myopathic features, and often with the degeneration follows regeneration. So also in the muscle, you have these regenerative fibers, which look bisophilic with plump nuclei. So all these are myopathic features. To differentiate, I have put in this slide from a neurogenic atrophy. And this is an extremely low power view to show these groups of atrophic and hypertrophic fibers. So there is a lot of fat infiltration, but the fascicles themselves do not have too much fat. And there are groups of these small fibers and inter intervening between you have groups of large fibers. So a high power view, just to show you what is, these are the groups of atrophic angulated fibers. So you have group atrophy, essentially groups of atrophic and groups of hypertrophic fibers or group hypertrophy. And you have nuclear clumps at the arrows. Nuclear clumping and pycnotic nuclei are a feature of neurogenic atrophy. As you know, most muscle fibers are actually syncytial fibers and they are multinuclear. So when atrophy occurs, these nuclei come together and form nuclear clumps. One other feature of neurogenic atrophy is uh, seen in the enzyme stains, which I will again elaborate in the next few slides. This is a, one of the enzyme stains that we routinely use in muscle lab, which is nicotinamide adenine dehydrogenase or NADH stain. And these stains show what is known as type grouping, meaning groups of similar type of fibers. So you have groups of dark fibers and you have groups of light fibers. So this is type grouping. And let's see how this comes about in denervation. So this is a cartoon to explain this phenomenon. This is a, mu a muscle motor unit with the nerve supplying various fibers. This nerve supplies the dark pink fibers and this supplies the light pink fibers. And in a normal muscle, you would have random distribution of these fibers giving what is known as the popular checkerboard appearance on ATPase and, uh, and on all the enzyme stains. What happens in denervation is the nerve gets cut 
Subsequently, the nerve fibers, the uh, I'm sorry, the muscle fibers which were supplied by this nerve twig atrophy and become small. And that causes a group atrophy because this entire group atrophies which are supplied by the same nerve twig. As is true in the rest of the body, the nerve next to it starts supplying collaterals and tries to revive these fibers. And since this nerve fiber typically has pale pink fibers, these fibers which have now been re by this nerve will also become pale pink. So you end up with groups of pale fibers and groups of now darker fibers. So that is known as type grouping, not nothing but similar type of fibers grouped together. So that is type grouping and group atrophy, which are typical features of denervation seen in neurogenic atrophy. So I dealt with that in a little greater detail because that is sort of basic to understanding muscle pathology to be able to differentiate neurogenic atrophy from myopathic features.